So let's start. Uh, I've been asked to stand in the spotlight, so I will do that. Uh, not really a place as a developer to stand in the spotlight, but let's start. So first of all, very welcome to this session uh, and <coughs> about C Sharp Dia Automatum. Um, so first of all, who am I? I'm Matthias Carlson. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP. I'm also an OSCode magician, which means I work with the OSCode community program. Uh, I'm also a senior architect developer and a partner at a co small company in Gothenburg, Sweden called Vika. They work both with development and operations. I've been coding since the late 80s. I uh, started on the 8-bit computers. Uh, but that's the real first love was, I always want to mention Amiga because that was my real first love with computers. I also, Hasbro 1, a father of two. Uh, and also, full disclosure, I'm biased here because I'm a maintainer and contributor of the Cake project. And shortly, what does that mean, maintaining? I do a lot of support with triaging issues and pull requests. I, we're very active on the Gitter channel and a lot of the, on the cake build hashtag on Stack Overflow. And I'm also highly engaged in the build server flow, keeping all those uh, our build servers and the containers and things like that. And uh, I do a fair bit of coding also. And this isn't only me. The cake organization or organization is more of a team effort. And the project, we give a short history, was started by Patrick Svensson in May of 2014. Um, fairly early, actually before that, September, I started bothering him with issues and pull requests. So I joined the team officially in 2014, in September. Then another person started sending pull requests, nagging with issues, uh, a lot about shock at the end things, and he joined in 2015. Um, Another uh, OC started setting program in Lightning and we got to join in. And the uh, latest now is Martin. So we have a great be fortune to have a good team behind, which is great for an open source project. So what are the like the traits, the goals of what are we trying to solve with Cake? We're trying to make a capable, extensible, and a modular configurable, open source, communal, and everywhere available. And if we, what do I mean by this, we're capable? We support many of the common build tools out of the box, uh, like MS build or X build is the old, it's been replaced by X build, by MS build now. We support the .NET Core CLI, we support NUnit, XUnit, MS Test, VS Test, NuGet, Chocolatey, like things like packaging with zip, globbing and cleaning, and etc. And the main thing about Cake is we don't replace uh, the tools. We like augment or orchestrate the tools. So there's over 400 built-in features within Cake. But also, as extensible, so. Via NuGet, uh, we offer the possibility to extend with its regular .NET assemblies for NuGet that we can extend with, uh, also with, with add-ins with our native. We can extend with script packs from NuGet, and we can also fetch tools from NuGet. And as I said, it's modular. It's, we have a built-in module system in Cake that we can replace and extend internals of Cake. We can add core functionality to Cake. And that means things that like we can change how Cake does tool resolution. We can add, uh, we'll explain later, PPOS directives. We can change how we handle the file system, logging, etc. When I say it's configurable, it's that we've made a lot of things to work according to your process. So you can, through environment variables, configuration files, command line arguments, control things like 
default behaviors. You can opt in. So if we add a new feature, we often add a configuration for it. So you can opt in and opt out for that feature. We have things like default paths for where we store tools or add-ins when we install them. You can on modules. You can also change that. Uh, same things like default NuGet sources and for the add-in the built-in functionality. And with open source, we have a permissive MIT license. So basically, you can go and run with it. Uh, the source is available up on GitHub. It's developed in the, uh, in the open there. And we're also a member of the .NET Foundation. And just to add, what is the .NET Foundation? Manually? It's an organization that was founded by Microsoft, but not only Microsoft. Now it has people like JetBrains and uh, Red Hat and among other companies. And their goal is to ensure longevity and stewardship of projects. So you have things like they can help. So you have a contributing guidelines and a CLA bots and things like that. Uh, their goal is to make the platform a credible open source because they have previously Microsoft and open source has been like cat and dogs, but that's not the future now. They provide us with resources as an open source project. So like build servers or Azure minutes or things to enable us to be good. And they want to like develop a grassroots, so they also do highly like, uh, talk at conferences and things like that. The big part is that they help us with legal and copyright, which can be a burden in things. And that's why I mentioned the CLA bot. They provide a way for automatically, when someone submits a pull request, that they sign a, a contributor's license. They do not take control of the project. So that's um, like a misconception, like the people think that now they, they own the product, now they help with these things. It's still the team that's founded the product, that stewards the product to before it. And with the community, I mean, our goal is to be welcoming for new people. We need to be that the product is approachable. We want it like to have a civil, we have a like this contributing guidelines in our repository to say how how we talk to Sarah, how we submit pull requests, that's important. We want to be helpful as long as, possible, as, long as we follow the guidelines we say. And we want to be awesome, obviously. And everywhere, well, we're cross-platform, we're cross-environment, and we're cross-runtime. And what do I mean by that? With cross-platform, well, we run on the Mac, we run on Linux, and we also run on Windows. With cross environment, uh, here is like we be able to be agnostic to the environment running. So we run on things like AppWare, Bamboo, uh, Bitbucket Pipelines, Bitrise, Continua, and the list goes on with the built in support for build systems. Of, of course, you can extend it. And also, the big part, we work on the developer's machine. The same experience on the developer machine as all those environments. And cross runtime, we support the .NET full, well, the old .NET on the desktop. We support .NET Core, so we we'll, our runtime will run on that. We support also running on the mono. And we like to be available. So we are available to be downloaded from NuGet, Chocolatey, which is the, like the apps get for Windows. We have available Homebrew, which is the Mac part, like their app get for Mac. We are available on GitHub, so all releases are available there. And asterisk is because we're soon, I'm working on this, we also will have ready containers on Docker Hub. Uh, so you can just build without having anything on your machine installed, just do the container thing. And we're also available MyGet, and there is where we push all our pre releases. So if you want to test something before we have released it, you can fetch from our MyGet source, and you can try with like the latest beast. Or if you submit a pull request and it got merged, you can try it with everything packaged together. So, what is it? Cake is .NET based. It's open source. It's a build orchestration tool. As I say, we don't replace anything. We orchestrate tools. Uh, we're a C sharp scripting DSL. We're powered by the uh, compiler Roslyn, 
And since yesterday, because I will demonstrate bits that are hours old, we only have Roslyn. Before we needed mono scripting engine on mono, but now we, with the latest Roslyn bits, we can use Roslyn across the board. So we have the exact same scripting experience across runtime now. So, why C sharp scripting? The idea is to have no craft, like no, like no project files, no solution files, no class main, very low ceremony, and self contained. It's still compiled, the whole script. So, you have something that's statically compiled, the whole script is not like you will get runtime errors, it's still an in the memory assembly. It's strongly typed because it's C-sharp, so all the aliases I'm talking about are strongly typed. It just can always reach out to the full power of .NET, because you can only use the class library, the regular class libraries. And it's the same experience regardless of which SDK framework or environment you're running on. At least that's the goal, but that's like the .NET Core has been a ride. So, quick some, some code, just to uh, see that it's just like C Sharp. The, the convention is, in general, to just have a build.cake file, we call it, to have a build definition. You can call it anything you want, but that's usually convention. And to show it's just C Sharp, we can do, do a quick, like, uh, and this is where the cake is live because currently we don't have IntelliSense, but we're working on it we're together with the OmniShop team. So Martin and our team has done great work, so we're just about to release. You will have full IntelliSense in which to do the code. Uh, so and we add a semicolon because that's how C Sharp works. And if we go to the command line and Basically, if you're going to execute the cake, it's just cake and your build cake file. And everything's self-contained in, yeah, hello. So everything's self-contained in one file. And uh, while you can use anything like I saw in the full, in the .NET framework, like console write line, we have uh, support for our way to, because we have a model system, we're logging things. We have verbosity where like information, debug, uh, warning, and things like that. So you can do information that will log differently, an error. Uh, but I also want to show that you can use anything in .NET. But you don't like, see the craft of public, class, static, like main. You can just type C sharp away and compile, and it still uh, just works. So, what we saw, this is like the simplest script is just that. You can just type C sharp away and it will compile. Um, but when I say it's a DSL, uh, it's, we add a few things. That's why IntelliSense was hard. We add a few things to, with a domain specific language with DSL. We add a task orchestrator. So, you have the whole dependency thing with that. We add pre processor directives. We add aliases, uh, which aliases are basically global methods. So you really can just use anything by just typing the method name and it will be globally available. They are just extension methods of a context. You could invoke it that way too. Uh, especially if you use cake out of, uh, like the cake things out of cake and not the way around, you can use that too. We have global properties where we expose things like uh, build system properties and uh, things like you can from app where check which version you're on or if you're building a pull request or similar things like that. So, task orchestration. Well, most builds have some kind of clean process. You have a restore process when you fetch your artifacts from NuGet and things like that. You have a build process where you basically build your things. You hopefully have a test process where you test something. You have something where you package your like a new get package or some APK or something like that, and you have a publish process where you publish these things. This concept in Cake is called task, so you will basically have a task. 
Uh, then what the orchestration part of this is that we have dependency, so we can add that before we build, we'll need to clean. And we also need to restore before we build. Before we can test, we need a successful build. And before we can package, we want to test. And before we publish, we need a package. So I'm going to show like a quick code of how we do uh, the task session. And that's also the definition of that is task. So you can have, uh, if we take a clean, so we're going to just, oh, if we're going to type, right, we're going to type. So and say we have a restore task. And then for ready to have a build. These are, now we will have defined our, our tasks. Uh, then we want the build task to be dependent, just to show that it's just an extension method of this task builder. So you can do is dependent on. And here you can send either in a task or just the name of the task you want to be dependent. So the task will return a uh, variable you can use, or you can just type uh, if you're in the present. So interesting. So this will depend on clean. It will depend on restore. And then, now we have a task graph, we need to execute it. So we say we will build. And we need a semicolon. So if we go to run our task now, hmm. I need to type correctly. Let's see what I missed. Yeah. That's actually a great demo because what I saw was very busted where you can. So if you just do, I said things were robust to be aware. We and it's compile code. If you, we have a couple different robust levels. You will see, uh, you can get a lot more information exactly where the error is if you want. If you just set the, the so that's the, like when someone raises the issue, that's the usual thing. Like, oh. Can you send me the diagnostic, the, di oh, the diagnostic variable? Like, if you set that, you can get a lot more information. Like, you can lo load the assembly or compile or uh, exactly like the line of code it's error on. So, if we learn to type, so. We can see that it did, uh, for me, the whole. So before we build, it did the restore, the clean, and it, it reverses the dependency graph to do it in the correct order. So this can be like a complete, currently it doesn't do anything, but we had to find the dependency graph. So, uh, and this can be like a complete example. You see, the first we have a clean, restore, build, and we set what each task is dependent on. And you can select which task you're from. It's also good to note we have a task lifecycle. So there are, before each task run, there's a setup method you can call, and you can have a, pass a lambda, and there you can pass a uh, thing. You have a task setup that runs report before each task. We run the task, we have a teardown with the task, and a global teardown. Let's see. 
So this is basically you can have you want some piece of code to run before, then you just have a setup. You get a setup. It's not here. A setup context. This is so nice with this intelligence. Like that, but how many do now? And I said we can have a teardown. That gives you, oh, sorry. and that will give you um, a teardown context. We have, but basically, can see. So if you now run, you will see that it prints out build starts first and build ends. And that's fine, but that's usually if you have something like we need to clean like some global things we need to set up. You can do that in a setup, things like fetch the version or you do something advanced like that. The teardown you can clean up, like you want to delete artifacts or whatnot. Uh, so that gives you uh, a global endpoint that will, regardless of which task you're running, you will always have a setup and tear down globally. And at the same, uh, uh, in the same way, so you have this, uh, uh, like I showed, that you have a setup, you have a setup context with some things. And we have the teardown, and there we also have some information on the on that variable of like if the build failed or things like that. you can do. Many do like things re like reporting, so you can have like post to the Slack channel when it starts and post to the Slack channel when it, if it's successful or not. Uh, and the task teardown is basically the same like we our setup is. You can get some events. You could post to Slack or do something before each, and that's a globally registered thing. So for each task, it will be notified. You can log in or something like that. And same for teardown. When the task is done, we will execute. And then, I, well, I said it was self-contained cake. We have a few pre-process directives in cake. We have pre-process directives for uh, called add-in, load, reference. We have a tool directive and shebang, and break, and a using directive. So. What are these? Well, the adding directive is basically that we can fetch an assembly from NuGet. And you can just add that at the top of your cake script, and you will be able to use any type in your script. It will do all the loading, fetching from NuGet. And one of the major features that we can opt into in the latest version we published hours ago is that we have built in NuGet support. So you can, without needing like, the NuGet XE, which means we work on both uh, well on core and uh, .NET uh, standard. You can also do things that well, I suggest you should do, always specify a version of that assembly. So you can like, I want these specifics. So if you want reproducible builds, you need to specify a version. And you can also force, like if you have a pre-release, that's a flag for that. We also have flags so you can say I want from this specific feed. I always want to have, like if you have a private repository or something like that, you can fetch from that. Uh, we also have the support to exclude not loading uh, certain, like I only want to load, like if an, a NuGet package has multiple assemblies, you can choose to only, with a globber pattern, only fetch, uh, instantiate one DLL load. We also have the support to include the same way. And these can be combined, so you can have multiple filters. 
Then there's the load directive. The load directive is to basically to load scripts. So you can have, like, if your script gets too big or you have utility classes or functions or things like that, you can place them in, in an external cake file. Uh, this gloss and scripting has two conventions. We support both, both the L and the load. We also we support loading scripts from NuGet. And that will basically be that you can package up in the content part of NuGet just a bunch of scripts and we will load everything into your and compile it with your cake script. And you can all also same file fetch from a custom source and also say I only want this script file. So if it's uh, you only want to use one file and only want to load that. You can uh, both exclude and include too. And that's a pattern you can do wildcard based with shield loading. We have the reference directory uh, directive, and that's also a standard Roslyn scripting thing. It's basically that you can reference an assembly. That, uh, directory. And that's R or reference. We have a tool directive, and that's uh, so you can fetch things like, like the n unit test runner or the x unit test runner or things like that. You can fetch that from uh, there. Uh, you can specify, which I recommend always, pin the version so you know which versions are running your build. But you can specify a version. You can also specify that you want the pre-release. You can specify all these are based on the same modules that have the same parameters. You can specify which feed you want to fetch it if you have a special feed. You can also do the uh, because all, not all tools are EXEs anymore. Uh, they can be scripts, like if you use like Gulp or Grunt or what or not, it can be a JS file. Uh, it can be an uh, XML file for some part or what not. Then you can set this is a tool and this will be registered in the cake tool resolution. It can also include. The shebang is basically just that we will ignore this directive. If you're running on uh, like Mac or Linux, we still, you're going to mainly add that, like if you add executable bit to a script, it will use this. Uh, so you can have a self-contained script in, uh, on Mac and Linux. It will start that. Uh, uh, on Windows, you have the file association if you want that. But basically, you can have the path if you have Cake Global installed. Uh, break directive is Basically, we can insert a debug, debug wait. Like the, so if you're, all cake scripts are debuggable. So you can, like in VS Code or Visual Studio, launch the cake exe with a script and single step in your cake script. So if you want to debug it. Uh, the break directive is just a shortcut to a debug break. Using directive is what we know and love. Like by default, uh, you can uh, like if you want something to be available without specifying the full type. Uh, we have a couple of namespaces that we import by default, so don't, those you don't need to add use things to. We also import uh, for uh, like the add-ins or NuGet packages that were written and to know about Cake to have attributes that can set, so we'll automatically import namespaces, so it will just be available for you. So, <coughs> as I said, there's a lot of aliases. Um, I will just demonstrate a few to see how it works, how you can do arguments, environment variables, cleaning, lobbing, and perhaps if we have time, don't let's lie, just to show. We can do quick. So currently, this script doesn't do much. So if we scroll a bit, uh, but if you want the task to do something, we have an extension method on the task builder core. Does. Let's see if it's and that's basically just a lambda that you can. Uh, it says here, you get documentation now. So, yes. so, if we want to clean and not clean, we have a bunch of 
aliases to, that will support cleaning. So if we have something like, uh, say we have artifacts uh, folder, you can just oh, I don't need that. do a clean and we'll clean that artifacts folder. Something like restore, you have the dust to do something. Uh, and then we have support like things like new get restore. Uh, we have a lot of support for that. So new get restore, which basically takes the file path. That's one good thing I talked about the module system that you can extend cake. We have uh, you just ha don't have just magic strings for things like path. We distinguish for directory paths and file paths. And that's like a behavior you can replace with the cake modules. Uh, so we can have some, like my source. Solution. And I talked about things like argument. Well, now it doesn't make sense here because I don't always want to run the build I want to be able to specify. So if I do uh, something like a variable, we can do a variable and we can do argument. Oh, sorry. And say we have an argument called target, and we have support for if no value is specified, we want to run build. So if we go, this will probably fail the build because it's not complete, but now it will run build, hopefully, because it defaults to that. It will fail on restore because I don't have that, and that's what you want. If some tool doesn't work, it will fail the build, which is in general what you want. Uh, but I, I just want to do the clean task. Well, as I s because I added uh, the argument that will pass target, I can then send that. I only want to do clean. And then the build shouldn't fail because I have implemented correctly the clean, and that will work. So, obtaining cake. How does one get cake on one's machine? Uh, the default way is recommended, like fetching it from NuGet, where it's our officially binaries are, but are signed with uh, that .NET Foundation code signing certificate, so you can know it's from us. Um, and we have a resources repository on our organization, which contains uh, a suggested implementation of a build PS1 file for Windows which will do just that, it will fetch cake, build, so basically it will just say build PS1 and it will launch the cake file the same way. Uh, and build sh for, for Linux. That will do all the bootstrapping for you. So basically if you add those two files to your repository, you will just execute one of those files and it will fetch the cake for you. And we'll also add uh, by default now uh, a tools folder, and it will add a packages config file in that uh, directory. I suggest you git ignore the tools folder because you don't want binaries in your git repository, but you want to commit that packages config file because then you will pin the version of the cake. So cake will you will know which version of cake your build's running, which is quite happy. You will also not be like a few people yesterday when I published a new version of cake screaming because your builds don't build anymore. Uh, so if you pin the version of Cake by committing that, that package config file, you will be good to go. And then you will, when you will test, you just change the version number in that file and it will update uh, and you can have controlled breaking changes locally. Because just as I said, 
the same script runs locally that's on your build environment. So you can test everything out and then push it. So these bootstrappers, the simplest way you can just fetch them from our site or from the repository if you don't trust us. You can fetch it from the, our resources repository and look at them for. Or and the same for the for Mac and Linux. So that will PowerShell one will work out of the box. The other one example that requires that you have curl installed, but you can do just surf to that URL and copy paste if you want to into a script file. So let's, I guess, demonstrate that. Let's see if we can get to to say when the clipboard doesn't work. So So if you have um, this built PS1, oh, I don't know why, because I have files in use. We can do a new folder. Let's do that. So here we have a, a clean folder where just to build PS1. If we just execute that, that you download it. Oh, cool. It actually worked. Just to resist it. It's so fast. So what has it done? I don't have build cake files, so it won't find it. So if we just add uh, to demonstrate. Light up against you. Do notepad because that's what it could. Because you can use any uh, editor you want if it ends up on screen. So, information. So, if you have Sublime or Vicious Dude or whatever you want to do. So what has the, like, the script done? If we look in the tools folder, you will have the K script runner will be downloaded. It will be a package config and an MDFM file. And that means basically if someone changes the package's config with a new version number, it will automatically, the script will clean and remove the old version of Cake for you. So that's the current bootstrapping situation.
So. That's basically what I have. So if there are any questions, I don't know if it's plausible in this environment. Um, I will be around the whole conference, so you can just grab me, ping me on Twitter or anything. Um, uh, thanks for uh, watching. And these are good URIs to have. Um, I will publish the slides on Twitter offline. Um, I'm devil at most everywhere. So uh, I'm I also start a new like office hours. So the intention there is to be able to dedicate some time where I can help the community with cake that people can book. Uh, also the cake resources. We have our cake build net where we have our documentation and everything available. We have the full doc in DSL documented. Uh, we have uh, also published a medium for them, and we have GitHub is the cake build. We have Twitter cake build net, and we have our Gitter channel, which is the usually the best way to reach out to us. So thank you very much. <laughs>